Hello, continuing our story, Poppy, Poppy by Avi, chapter 15, Alone Again. Irith moaned softly. <clears throat> Isn't that the most luscious thing in the whole world? He asked, gazing at the salt lick. Poppy, whose eyes were fixed on the enormous owl, could hardly speak. It's awful, she barely squeaked. Irith turned to her. What? What are you saying? He demanded. Look, Poppy cried, trembling as she pointed to the owl on the barn. Eric turned, looked. Mm, never noticed that before, he grunted. In wonder, Poppy murmured, Mr. Okex is only half that size. Eric shrugged, then went back to gazing at the salt. Well, girl, he said. Have you figured out how you're going to get that salt for me? Poppy, still in a state of shock, managed only to shake her head. Aerith took one last loving look at the salt and turned. Mm, you know where to find me, he said. Don't let that me down. With that, he began to waddle away. Aerith, Poppy cried, her fearful trance broken. Wait! The porcupine peered around peevishly. Mm, what now? He grumbled. You aren't going to just leave me here, are you? Mm, what else am I supposed to do? Help me? Poppy said in a small voice. Mm, Poppy, we made a deal. I'd get you here. You'd get me the salt. I've done my part. Now do yours. But? No buts! Ira snapped, lashing his tail in irritation. Poppy backed up. I'm going home now, but I'll be waiting. With a final glare, he said, Keep your promise, furball, and marched off. Poppy started to run after him, but tripped on something and fell. When she got up, Irith had disappeared among the corn. An unhappy Poppy dusted herself off. It was then that she noted what had tripped her. It was one of Irith's tail quills. When he flounced his tail, it had fallen out. Poppy picked the quill up gingerly. She'd never really looked at one closely before. It was mostly black and made of long, fused hairs, just as Aerith had said. One end was blunt. The other end, the sharp end, was ivory white. With fascination, Poppy examined the tiny barbs. The point, which she was unable to resist touching, was frightened, frightfully sharp. She was about to toss the quill away when she had an idea. Grasping it by the blunt end, she swished it about a few times. It moved nicely like a sword. Poppy found a tall blade of grass, plucked it, and tied it around her waist in sash-like fashion. With care, she slid the quill under this belt. It fit comfortably. Then she drew the quill out a few times to see if it came out freely. Though a single quill was not the full arsenal that Aerith carried, it was something. She only hoped she'd never have to use it. Reluctantly, Poppy turned her attention back to the enormous owl on the barn. The bird had not moved, but was still sitting on its perch, gazing off into the distance with huge eyes. Poppy was relieved it had not turned her way. The realization that at any moment the owl might turn and discover her made Poppy retreat into the corn, but not so far that she'd be unable to peer out. Once hidden, she tried to make sense of her situation. It was all very well to have reached Newhouse, but now that she'd arrived, she still had no real clue to why Mr. Okax would not permit them to move here. All she had seen was this huge owl. Could his reason have something to do with that? Poppy tried to think it through. An owl of this size would be ferocious. Perhaps Mr. Okax was worried that this bird would steal his food. It certainly would eat a lot. The truth was, and Poppy forced herself to acknowledge it. This huge owl made moving here impossible. Mr. Okax was bad enough. This owl looked twice as bad. Then Poppy had a new thought. Was Mr. Okax really trying to protect her family? Had she been wrong about him all along? But then, perhaps, this owl was not really living here at Newhouse. Simply because she was seeing it now proved nothing. It could be passing through, perhaps just spending the night. The sun was up now. Poppy decided she had best settle in 
and wait to see what happened, if anything. And that's the end of chapter 15.